Ready for one more call? Yeah, we got time for one we more. Do it. Let's stretch it out. We're going to do one more. We're going to do one more. We're going to stretch it out. All right, last one. Hi, Andrew. You're on the Atheist Experience. What would you like to discuss today? Hi, uh, yeah. I just wanted to lay out an argument as to why I think it can be said there's equal amounts of evidence for uh, evolution and um, creation. Um, you know, non evolution, I mean, just creation in general or by a creator. Um, and I guess it, the argument would go something like this. Um, recently, I was talking to someone, I said, well, you know, we've never actually observed evolution in terms of mutations causing a new species that produces fertile offspring. Yeah, uh, we have. Certainly not in, not in, uh, not in animals, uh, at least. Yeah, we have. Possibly in plants, but definitely, huh? Yeah, we have. We, we, we've seen it in a couple of different things. I mean, one of the easiest things to do is, is with flies just because they just like fuck a lot and they make a lot of baby flies. So it's easy to get through species, but we've, we've actually seen it with a bunch of things. So like fish is one of the ones that comes to mind. I'm not a fisherman, but I am in Tennessee. There are a lot of streams and lakes and rivers and fish, and we've watched fish become new species of yeah. fish. If so. you're talking about like the flies that develop like different patterns on their wings and stuff, that's, that's not I'm talking about the flies that have enough of a morphological and genealogical difference that they are far enough apart that they can be considered different species that's what i'm talking about well which I'm, i know is i know is just one example that's that's just one example to be a new species it has to be uh reproductively isolated um not mechanically but like genetically yep. and i'm yeah i'm quite what about like ring species, species of birds yeah like yeah. there's ring species of birds so you can uh -huh. see the progression where like they can reproduce with each other down the line going backwards but like they can't reproduce with yeah. Mm -hmm. like, lizards as well not, which you yeah, might be half lizard shannon a, we we, 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 we still have that jury still out on that that's, <laughs> that's, that's not a new species if they can still reproduce with their ancestors it's just no. a, it's just a modified it's not a new species no i don't think you understand what it, like in ring species like there's like a, a an original species and that and and we can see them propagating and then they develop a slightly slightly varied version and then they get with birds because they can fly they get far enough away that they're no longer reproducing with their parent species mm -hmm. so they develop yeah, slightly they differently develop. and then no i'm one i'm not done explaining it and then it'll make sense when i'm done and then there's another iteration where the same thing happens and they go farther away geographically so they're they're away from their parents so now there's three generations of of species removed mm -hmm. and so on and so on all the way to like four, five, six generations. So each of these bird species can reproduce with their individual parent species, but that, but they can't reproduce with like two steps back in, in that, in that step of iterations. So like, if you see it as like a set of steps going up, like you can do, you can reproduce one step back, but not two or three steps back. Right. So we see that constantly. They're called ring species. There's a name for it. It's so prominent. I don't think that's happened on a genetic level. I mean, I know species can become mechanically isolated from reproducing, but I'm, that is, I really, I don't think there's. What do you mean by genetic level though there? Because we're, we're talking about, we can identify species I mean, like, one. I mean, what I do I have? Know. I need something physical to hold my hand. So like, this is species <laughs> one of my lip gloss. And then species one of my lip gloss produces species oh. two of my lip gloss. And species two can produce with species one, but then species three comes up here. Species three can produce with species two, but not species one, right? So we're we're seeing this happen. Like we can we we can tell because these two genetically are almost identical, mm -hmm. with the exception of a slight mutation. They're still able to reproduce with one another. And then this one and this one, number three are genetically similar like we can look at their genetics and we can see like we can we can map their their chromosomes and their genetics and get their genome and see that they're they're similar with mild variation these two can reproduce together but this one can't go all the way back to the first one which we've already said is basically genetically identical with a slight iteration but that's genetic that is genetics one i don't I don't know if you can prove that, but also the theory of evolution says, you know, millions of years 
are needed for this to happen. So I don't even know how you could go. So on the theory, here. the theory of evolution, does not say that millions of years is needed for any individual species to go through this process, right? What it's saying is so, that most likely the amount of time that it has taken for us, like not as hairy apes to like walk around and like ask these type of questions that's probably gotten us you know a million million years but again we use flies in the laboratory to do these types of testing specifically because of the fact that they have such a short lifespan because we know in like two weeks time we're just going to have millions of fly babies and that that is beneficial if we're trying to watch genetic drift over the population so so like uh, the idea of it being a long time is not on an individual case by case basis necessarily. It's just talking about kind of the whole spectrum of those, those tiny little single cells all the way to people talking on YouTube. Like, does that make, does that make sense? No, I understand what you're saying. I still don't think there are examples that we've observed of, of new species forming that are reproductive. There's a lot from there. There's, there. There's, we're There's a couple. Told, I, yeah, we, we gave you a few broad categories there. I, I don't have the name of the lizard off my, off top of my head, but let's try different like maybe this one will work you know what did it you know what did it absolutely for me like was the linchpin like there's like there's no turning back from this, like looking at endogenous retroviruses. Oh, that's a good point. Endogenous retrovirus viruses inserts aren't, viruses like viruses aren't alive. So, I mean, that, okay, I, I yeah, but that's, don't. That's, yeah. I'm not sure that I think you may be incorrectly predicting where I'm going with with this, just because of the word virus. Okay. So endogenous retroviruses are vi like a, a viral infection that caused like a change to a component of your genome. So we can see it, like when we map we map the genome, right? So you can see on the genome, like on the on the chromosomes, you can see where there's been like a virus that caused like some sort of like damage that caused a mutation that may have been beneficial. So it stayed. So we can see where these things happen. We can see endogenous retrovirus virus inserts on the map genome. So if we take our human map genome, right. And we put it up and we light up all the inserts where there's an endogenous retrovirus on, on the entirety of our genome. And we see them laid out. And then we take like, a chimpanzee and lay it on top mm. we see and that this is way more than chance that they're all in the same spots like just mm -hmm. thousands of them like all mm -hmm. in the same spots not all sorry but mostly in the same spots more so than you could ac account for by chance which indicates that those endogenous retroviruses were inserted into our genome into our genetic material prior to us splitting off into different species that's the only explanation but, for that but but chimps and humans have different genomes so there's no possible way they could line up i mean you could say yeah oh, no that's right I, you would think that but they do because we have we have different genomes now mm -hmm. because we evolved mm -hmm. and our genomes changed yeah. But they haven't changed so much that we don't see these endogenous retroviruses inserted anymore, which tells you that the only way it's possible for us to have these endogenous retrovirus inserts in our genome in the identical places mm -hmm. is if at one point in time, if you rewind time, that we were the same species and that that species was different than what we both are independently now and that we evolved away from each other but kept that history the same way that you know if you took a genetic test you could tell who your father is you and your father don't have the exact same dna and you could tell who your mother is you don't have the exact same dna but they're similar enough it's the same type of science that right. you can see where the overlaps are and it's well beyond chance that you would get a match if they were your parent and not if they weren't, unless they were some sort of iteration of, of, of closer relative, and then it gets farther and farther away. It's the same science, only back millions, like hundreds of thousands to millions of years. Plus all of the confirmed yeah. predictions we've already got on the books. Like there are, there have literally been over a hundred years worth of 
smart, thinky people, I'm pretty sure that's the technical term, who have said, hey, this is the thing that we will find if our predictions are true, that species mm. are kind of changing and stuff. And then like one of those predictions, um, one of those predictions was proven true, like, I don't know, a few years after Darwin wrote his original book. I think that was, was her like, yeah, he was like, I think we'll find this thing if we dig. And they were like, oh, my God, look, there it is. Right. Yeah, you're not you're not using specific examples, so I can't really conclude anything from that. Tertalic. Tertalic. Yeah. yeah, plus for, ring species. You can just go look up a handful of different ring species that exist in, in lizards as well as fish as well as birds, I think. I think yeah, I would, both of those. I would be willing to bet, bet everything on the fact that if you take the – the eggs and the sperm from those species, they would be able to reproduce with their, any of their ancestors for as far back as you want. I would bet anything on that. I haven't looked into it. You haven't looked into some of the things I brought up, but, but I don't think you've convinced me that. There well, I think you should definitely go, go take a look at these things first before just attempting yeah, to overturn over 150 years worth of very well proven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's one of the things that I mean, is the have... most settled out there. It's not. It's not. Oh, okay. So I'll tell you what. Like, go look up endogenous retroviruses mm -hmm. and call me back after you've no, looked I it know. up. I, I have a biology degree. Well, I know what those are. I know. I know. You have a biology degree. Yeah. Why didn't you mention a biology degree right at the beginning? Why didn't you tell us about the science that you're currently doing in your laboratory? You. I, I'm not I, currently working in uh, computer science because I like the jobs better. So that, I mean, it's. I, the fact that you I'm have a biology degree and has not heard of endogenous retroviruses. My, my best friend is a PhD no, I, in biology. She no. studied conservational ecology, and I've had this conversation with her so many times because I because I talk to people who don't believe evolution is real, and she has made it so exceptionally clear to me that the like the entire foundation of that field mm. yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. is there are studies is evolution. Want to talk about different studies like. Like if you look at the mutation rate. If you give me some ICR bullshit, I still help me, God. Please don't. I don't. I don't. Do know not give me some ICR mutation. bullshit, please, for the love of God. Know, I don't even know what ICR is. It's so probably where whatever study different. you're about to say came from. So please just yeah. look at where the study so came from in because in general, you can find in multiple places the mutation rate, and then if you look at you know the time needed for that mutation rate to produce what we see today then that's just more than they theorized the universe has existed. It's longer. So, I mean, we can we can bounce things back and forth, but I still don't think you've proven that we've observed evolution. And my, my point that I never got to was that if we've never observed it, which if that was granted, then you yeah. could say the same thing about we creation. Oh, it happened, <laughs> just never observed it. So, and it's going to happen again. You well, you're, you're saying if this yeah. entire conversation <laughs> never happened, then you could say... <laughs> something different than the outcome of this call. I am yeah. I I don't know how to we're just going to let you go. Thank you yeah. Andrew. Thank you Please Andrew. Call back some other time. Have a lovely evening. Yeah. And uh, I'm at capacity. <laughs> I, I, I thought it went really well today. Uh, there were a couple of calls I'm going to have to listen back to just to make sure I was in the right like place. I, I There were a couple of times I was very confused. This, yeah, I exited my episode. body yeah. a, a few times. <laughs> yes.